We're heading to a wooded area just outside of Menominee, Michigan. A hunting guide named Craig Sulk, who owns 80 acres of land up here, puts up trail cameras on his property to monitor the game moving through here. And one of those cameras happened to capture something that Craig can't explain. From what I can tell, it doesn't look like a person in that it all has one uniform tone. So that's either a hunter dressed up to all be one collar, or it's a Sasquatch. So here we are getting into Menominee, Michigan. We're right here on the border between Michigan and Wisconsin. And this area does look a lot like the UP does for the rest of it. Thick forests. Yeah, I've heard a lot of reports and I get a lot of emails saying, when are you going to come up here? We get a lot of squatch action, especially in the fall. So we're up here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. People think of like Detroit, that sort of area. But we're across the Great Lakes up north of there. It's a big landmass, but it only has 3% of the state's population. This is great squatch habitat. It's a harsh environment, but it's full of food most of the year. There's also a lot of marshy areas where squatches can retreat in the winter. This place is it. Well, I'm interested in looking into this photograph we got of this guy, Craig Sulk. I think something's in there, and this will be another part of the UP that may have more than one, may have a few families of squatches. The photographs are pretty interesting. A little blob squatchy, but there is clearly something there. Out of the three photographs taken less than two minutes apart from one another, in that middle photograph, that large figure is there, but not in the other two. That means something moved in and moved out of frame in those three photographs. The middle photograph is the key. That's the one that might hold the Sasquatch. When I first laid eyes on Craig's photograph, the first thing I thought was, oh, there it is, definitive proof. Deer exist, and so do their butts. But it turns out there was something more interesting in the background. By scrolling through the three photographs in sequence, you can clearly see that the middle photograph has something that the other two do not. There is a figure there. It is either a human or a Bigfoot. And it's our job to find out which one. Craig strikes me as an honest guy. He wasn't trying to get a prize-winning photo of a Sasquatch. He's not even saying this is a Bigfoot photo. A uh, Matt. Matt? I'm just happy that he was open-minded enough to get in touch with us and send us the photos so we could come check it out. This here's the tree that the camera is on. And which direction was the camera facing? It's facing to the north, right through here. So that's the stump that the deer was smelling? Yes. Why was it smelling the stump? We put minerals out for the deer for, uh, it's better for antler growth, and it's supposed to help the does with their uh, milk production and stuff like that. So we put that out all over the property. We have 10 cameras out usually all year on the 80 acres. And we look at around 20,000 pictures. And in the sequence of the three pictures, the middle picture, I just can't explain what is in it. And that's why I was hoping you guys would be able to help me. We can. Over the years, I've dealt with a lot of people that want to have a Bigfoot on their property, or they want to see a Bigfoot in a photo. They want you to see the same thing. And you're looking at it going, it looks like a blob, or it's just a dark spot. He's not one of those guys. He's just a hunter that has an interesting figure in the photo, and he wants to get to the bottom of it. He wants to know what it is. He's not saying it's a squatch. He's wondering if it is. What other sorts of large mammals do you have in the area that might be confused for something this size? We have bear that'll come through the property, and especially with this kind of mineral we use, which is apple scented. And we have deer, but the size in proportion to the distance, I just don't see it as being a deer. What about people or other hunters? Because we are Christian conservatives and believe in the Second Amendment right, there's no way that's another human on this property. Your neighbors all know you guys are gun toting, trigger happy. There's nobody who would venture onto this property. Initially meeting Craig, I really like the guy. He admits he doesn't know exactly what is in the picture. But I find it strange that he rules out a human because he believes in the Second Amendment. With a substantial deer population and lush habitat, this land could definitely support a bipedal apex predator. But that predator is most likely a hunter, not a Sasquatch. Well, it sounds to me like you have a mystery on your hands, and we're getting pretty good at doing recreations like this. So hopefully we can shed a little bit of light on the size of that figure, and maybe we can even eliminate human as a possibility. I'd appreciate that. You just sent me in the right spot. 
us a general idea of the location where the figure stood that day. But what we want to do now is take a photo with Bobo at the same location as the figure so we can compare the two images and rule out that this couldn't be a person. Does that look good to you, Craig? Good. So what we have here is um, uh, basically you standing more or less in the same position within a few feet, maybe five feet. Well, what stands out right away is look how much broader your shoulders are to the original figure. Yeah. The fact that it's his size or smaller, though, doesn't eliminate the chance that it's a Sasquatch because they're also that size as well. They grow from being very small to growing up. I think if it had been a person, I think you'd see a difference in the amount of reflectivity or darkness between the top and the bottom there, and you don't. It's as if it's all covered with the same color fur. Basically, what we have here is a humanoid-shaped figure that appears in one photograph that is not there a minute later nor a minute before. This thing came by, was at the right place at the right time to get his photograph taken. Maybe that's a Bigfoot. All right. All right. So we're not exactly sure what's in that photograph, but the possibility of it being a Bigfoot is enough for us to stick around and do a night investigation. All right, Craig, we really appreciate you letting us come on your property, and especially that you're going to join us tonight. Yeah, I think we should go to the north where the road cuts off. There's actually an area there we call the sanctuary because it's the thickest area, and that's where the deer seem to hang out the most on this property. OK, let's move out. OK. The plan for the night is Renee and Cliff are going to go in one direction. Bobo and I are going to go in another direction with the help of Craig. He's going to take us to an area he says is the thickest part of the forest around here. So we're going to get near that, and make sounds around it, and see what happens. Have you heard anyone in this general area having Bigfoot encounters or sightings? Not right here, but having talked to the, the neighbors, I uh, have. One neighbor at the end of the road has seen one, but he ha didn't see it in this area. Oh. And that was a few years back, he said he's seen it. How far from here? I'd say it was about 15 miles north of here. Oh, OK. Well, before we get too far from there, Timmy, we should do a call. Renee and Cliff, do you copy? Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Hey, listen, we're at a good place where we can make some sounds. How about you? Yeah, we are uh, ready to listen. Fire away. All right, Craig, let's see if you can get a squatch. Yes. Sounds like an elephant. That <laughs> did. Good job. Did you hear that? Yeah. The woods are coming alive. Oh, yeah. Ooh. What is that? 